I am here with Georg Kuksko, the CTO and co-founder of Suno, and we're here to talk about how this place got started from a technical perspective. Your team you know, really started first working on an open source model that later became Suno. Tell us how that came to pass. Yeah, sure. Bark, our first model, was a really great project to work on. It was the first text-to-speech model that was meant to be open-ended. So usually text-to-speech models, you type in a text and you turn that into speech, is very generic. It produces speech that is very high quality, but fairly standard news anchor, mm -hmm. highly intelligible standard speech. And we had the idea to break that paradigm and sure. say a sentence written out in one way can technically be pronounced in many different ways. It could be high quality speech, but it could also be somebody shouting it in a soccer match, somebody whispering it to somebody else, having completely different emotion attached to it, different pacing, etc. And so we trained a model like that and we actually gave users control over that. So you could write, for example, things like clears throat, well actually, comma, dot, 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 mm -hmm. I was thinking. And then the model would understand from context what that would mean. So you would actually hear a throat clear and a certain hesitation while they were talking. And people really enjoyed that. So people started playing around with it and started to think about text-to-speech from a slightly different angle. Not just how do I get the high quality speech, but how do I really get it to the emotional, interesting, creative level that I'm looking for. And then over time, we saw more and more that people were trying to get interesting, weird things out of that model, and that included music. So they tried to get people to hum, to whistle, to sing, and really started to have a lot of fun with that. And so that's what led us down the path of creating Sono. Now this is a music AI company, but it's really a research company, which I think is an important note. So what are some of those technical breakthroughs that you've been excited about, that you've gone through with your team to reach this level of scale? Yeah, sure. So audio is a very interesting space because it lies a little bit in between the two large domains that both academia and industry is focusing mm -hmm. on, which is text and image. And so image, you have these large diffusion flow models that people like to use. Text, you have these even larger sequential GPT style models. And audio is somewhere in between because you have both the large coherent structure as well as the sort of small high fidelity, difficult to achieve perceptive structure. And so it really is a, in a space where you have to borrow Right. interesting research advances from both of those fields, figuring out you know, what are efficient ways to distill flow, what are good ways to scale context window sizes and have a good attention pattern. That allows us to even, as a small company, compete with the largest research labs, which is really the thing that I think is probably the most fascinating for everyone. The other side of it, what makes it interesting, is preference data. So we know from ever since ChatGPT came out how much RLHF and other preference tuning techniques can really affect what the final quality of the output of the algorithm is. And for us, it's no different. You know, We have the largest group of amazing creatives in the music space who use our product every day. And so we continuously collect data on what is it that they are looking for? What of the model outputs are the things that lead to the thing that they were requesting? And so we can feed that back to the model to over time better and better approach the thing that they are actually looking for and give them the type of creative output they want. Definitely. Now, where is music AI headed? What are you most excited about with you and what your team is building? Yeah, so our approach was always build one single foundation frontier model that essentially powers the entire platform and we've still essentially stuck to that. And the first goal was to make decent music. So sure. to figure out how to teach the algorithm sort of an alphabet of music, like piece by piece to really understand how to create melodies, how to create an instrument, how to create the composition. And once we've gotten to the place where the algorithm essentially understands the basics of music, then we can lean into control. Because then you want to make sure that for your users, it doesn't just become a random number generator where you hit a button and you get a maybe okay song out of it. But instead, you want to figure out what is it that they're really trying to achieve? What are they thinking about? Maybe you get them to hum a melody. Maybe they play a piece of music on their favorite instrument. And maybe they tap the table in a certain pattern. And then you want to combine these things and turn them into that piece that they're looking for. So giving people exactly the types of controls that they're looking for is something that's crucial here. And then also iterating on them, right? So it shouldn't be something where every time you start from scratch, you type something in, you get a new attempt. Eh, it wasn't good enough, let me try another one. Instead, you want to create something and then iterate on it. You want right. to say, ooh, I like this, but you know, the second chorus doesn't really hit hard enough. And actually, it'd be really cool if there were a violin sort of slowly coming in during that section. So I think both of those will help really give people the type of control that they're looking for. Yeah, now these are large white space machine learning problems that your team is tackling every day. For machine learning builders or just technical builders in general who want to learn more about Suno, who want to know what this place is even like to work at, what would you tell them? Suno is, at the end of the day, like 
most good companies, I think most about the people, not just colleagues we work with, but also the people outside the companies that we get to work with. Even originally we started this, it's called Suno. My wife named it, it's a Punjabi and it means to listen. So it's something that, Very important. that a, a wife will often say to their husband that they should pay attention and listen. And so, you know, for music, it's really all about that. It's listening to music, understanding music, understanding our users and figuring out how to turn that into what they're looking for. So it really helps to also work on a product like ours that you really use yourself and you love yourself. And so it's fantastic to see that in everyone here that they love music, they love playing instruments, but they also love using Sono and combining those things in all the right ways. Music AI, audio AI, it's a really hard problem space. It, it, takes a bit of everything you have. We're aiming to build a large scale frontier model that is able to understand, create, and really scale with everything that the users are doing. The amount of preference data we get, we're lucky to have as much, but translating that into sure. really creating the product in, in a way that it serves preference is something that are some of the biggest challenges right now for everyone in this space. So it's really exciting to work on those. This is Georg, the CTO of Suno. Thanks so much for joining us. Thanks so much.